So confident, in fact, we'd agreed to test them in a timed speed run. The Duke of Haphazard went first. You ready? Listen to that. Two leaders are fighting fury. Go! Go, go, go! Is he moving or what? Ah! The exhaust! Oh. <laughs> Can you actually breathe? Why did you lift before the line? You couldn't stand the speed, or...? Oh, I didn't want to gum tree as my hood ornament. That's why. I can see me going into the scrub for about joke? 500 kilometres. Do you want to know the time? One hour, six... No, it was 13.50. Get this thing out of here. It's horrible. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> That's red and black oil. Red and black. <laughs> oh, listen to that. That is just shocking. You ready, Steve? As I'll ever be. Go. Oh. It's three. Four cylinders going. Come on! Oh. Oh. Come on! <laughs> Come on! Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> no brakes. This has no brakes at all. <laughs> ah, a fast taxi. What an amazing it's thing. It's not a thing mate. of beauty, mate. I think that was slowing you down a little bit. What do you reckon your time was? Shocking. You're going to be embarrassed. 13.81. Oh, no! The General Lee! I told you. Second to a camera. See? <laughs> I'm in love with this car. This is the premiere. We didn't have one of these. We had a Belmont. It's got a push button radio, air vent, special air vent, heater demister, all the things we didn't have, Dad. This has got it. <laughs> Hurry, it's smoke. She's smoking up in here. I'm getting dizzy. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> come on, baby, come on. It's like watching Division 4. See, that's what a proper race car looks like. Yeah, it looks like sort of several race cars, this one. <laughs> do you want... Now, do you want to know your time? I, I don't care. Yes, please. 17.72. Woo! Yeah! That's that, me. The Camry wins. <laughs> We've been done by a wagon. Now... Warren might be ahead after the timed run section, but I can promise you that unnatural state of affairs will soon be rectified. Hang around for the second half of this. It is absolute carnage. But in the meantime, news, boys. Now, first up of the news, Charlie, you've got us in the poop, OK? Oh. <laughs> in that first segment, that first story of the first episode, you mentioned that the Porsche 911 was a pooftinth. Oh, yeah. More fuel economical than a Camry. Pooftinth. Of course, I know, I know, I know, it is bad. I've, we've had letters, people writing in, phoning in, even articles in the paper. But I can tell you, seriously, it is a point of measure. Oh, but Charlie, Charlie and Steve, look, I have to say, I've done a bit of research on this, and this, the, the term pooftinth is a technical term. We all know that a pooftinth is actually 0.37 <laughs> of a bee's dick. Mm. <laughs> and a bee's dick is uh, four gnats nasties. <laughs> And four Nats Nasties equates to three-fifths of the Football Association, I think that stands for. <laughs> Who said we don't research? And speaking of technicalities, a technicality has caused a brouhaha between Nissan and Porsche. Big brouhaha, actually. A brouhaha. Mm. Uh -huh. <laughs> now, the, pro the problem has been that the Nissan GTR, which was, you know, created and, you know, came out this year, has claimed that it's gone faster around Nürburgring than a Porsche 911. Now, Porsche are really upset about this, so they've gone and tested that out and they've actually gone out and bought a GTR. And they've started to do a whole mess of testing. Can't get 
20 seconds near the lap time of that thing. So there's a big technical brouhaha over what sort of tyres it was on, whether it was on road tyres or actual race tyres or anything like that at all. Now, the, the other big problem that's actually come out of this is that Porsche have done that much testing that they've actually worn out parts on the GTR. <laughs> they've rung up the local Nissan dealership and gone, uh, have you got parts for us? And they've just gone, no, and hung out the phone. <laughs> so it's probably under warranty. Yeah, it was, exactly, yeah. They wanted to use their trade discount card. Now, on the subject of brouhaha's, the argy-bargy between the Holden Commodore and the Toyota Corolla as Australia's best-selling car this month has seen the Commodore come out on top because of this, the sports wagon, which I reckon is a really great-looking car. Pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, and I also reckon that um, it'll probably put a dent in the sales of um, SUVs and four-wheel drives because we haven't had a Holden Commodore station wagon for a couple of years. I reckon it's great. Now, an insurance company survey has found that almost 50% of Australians don't know the rules for a multi-lane roundabout. How many people in here know what the road rules are for driving around a multi-lane roundabout? Put your hand down. You're lying, you don't. <laughs> Nobody does. Nobody. You need a compass and a slide rule, I know that, to work it out. Look at that, would you? <laughs> but roundabouts, I mean, they are springing up all over the place like mushrooms. Uh, these stupid little ones on T-intersections, some idiot chucks a frisbee in the middle of a T-junction, it's all of a sudden a roundabout, someone pulls right in front of you and hey, hey, hey. Now, I blame all of this on the Poms because I believe that the Poms <laughs> oh, brought us the roundabout. Now, this is not any roundabout. They do have a lovely sense of irony, the magic roundabout. This is really a place near Swindon. And as you can see, that is the five roundabout cluster. It's a bit like a solar system, really, and there's the sun and all the rest of it. Two very important things to note, though. Number one, one of the roundabouts takes you to a dead end. Nice play, boys. <laughs> really cool. Secondly, that one there, takes you to a hospital with accident and emergency, <laughs> which you need with a roundabout system like that. It's a bit like that one at Brisbane Airport. Has anyone actually been oh, to that yeah, Brisbane yeah, Airport yeah. one? It's actually under the motorway. So you've got, to got, you've got seven sort of exits leading off this thing, and it's so bad, they've ac actually had to put two sets of traffic lights to actually sort it all out. Mate, I'm with the French, and I never thought I'd say this. <laughs> they've got roundabouts sorted. That enormous one on the Arc de Triomphe. Yeah. Round oh, yeah, and round yeah, and yeah. round, everybody goes. It's about 10 football pitches wide. A million roads run into it. And there are no line markings on it, nothing at all, and no rules. Catch and kill your own. Now, coming up after the break, Warren drives the BMW X6, and our star in a bog-standard car can't drive a manual. <laughs> Does anybody here know what this is? Yeah. It's a BMW, and what sort of BMW is it? An X6. But what is that? BMW says this is a stylish refusal to compromise. But what is that? It's a 2.7 tonne four-wheel drive, so that makes it a truck. But it's not. It has a 